Two new reports of airline bomb threats emerged today. An anonymous caller saying he represents the group that bombed Pan Am Flight 103 warned of another attack unless the U.S. expels the son of the former Shah of Iran who lives outside Washington, D.C. That threat came from the Guardians of the Islamic Revolution. U.S. officials do not believe that group was responsible for the Pan Am disaster. The other threat by a Palestinian group was made a week ago but revealed today. And as State Department correspondent John Dancy reports, it is being taken seriously. Airlines operating in Asia have tightened security. This after receiving a warning that a Palestinian group threatened to blow up or hijack an airliner somewhere in the Pacific. The warning came from the Indian government and was passed from airline to airline in the Far East. Here in the U.S., State Department spokeswoman Phyllis Oakley said the department was aware of the reported warning, which she said was one of hundreds received by the airlines. The FAA, as you know, intelligence community, law enforcement community, they all analyze these and determine what the appropriate measures are. In this case, the FAA took the warning seriously, telling airlines on Christmas Eve, although no U.S. carriers were specifically identified as targets, this information is disseminated as a precautionary measure. But as customary, there was no public warning. The warning said guerrillas loyal to this man, known as Abu Musa, would attack a plane in the Pacific area before January 10th. In Los Angeles today, as Japan Airlines Flight 61 was boarding for Tokyo, there were no signs of stepped-up security. But airline officials say that's because they increased security months ago, long before the bombing of Pan Am 103. We have our security guards at the uh, in front of our counters here to inspect any suspicious uh, people uh, that may be uh, in the area. Told of the warning, passengers seemed fatalistic. Every time I get on the plane, I think about it for the first 10, 15 minutes, and then I try to put it out of my mind because it just drive you crazy, but you gotta fly. I, I just couldn't let it affect me and then still try and maintain my, my jobs. Whether the warning was real or not, it has forced some airlines to alter their normal routine, and it has escalated the war of nerves between terrorists and the West. John Dancy, NBC News, at the State Department.